Hello everyone, this is me Mohamed Yakub. I'm making a new video series about STM board timers. This is requested by many people in the past, so I decided to make some videos about them and explain what they're all about. STM board timers, or generally any microcontroller timers, do three main functionalities. Output compare, input compare, and internal event trigger. I will talk about them in three separate videos. At this particular video, I will talk to you about output compare. Output compare with the help of Wikipedia's definition is an ability to trigger an output based on a timestamp in memory without interrupting the execution of the CPU. And this is in fact a very useful feature, which means that I can trigger any external event using the internal timers. Uh, for example, I can toggle an LED every half a second using timers without having to write that conventional code turn LED on, wait half a second, and turn it off wait another half a second. So I don't have to write all of that. I can just program the timer to do all of that for me. At my demo today, I'll toggle my four LEDs using the output compare functionality of the STM timers. So I'm going to toggle them in a cycle, green, orange, red, blue, and continuously cycle around them. The way I prefer to do it is that I prefer to demo it using Cubemic first and then get back to the diagram and explain to you what each part is doing because there are so many things to talk about and it will be much easier after visualization. You will find it so easy, trust me. So let me start this way and open Cubemix. Uh, on Cubemix, first select new project and select the right MCU, STM3047 in my case, uh, VGT. And on the panel, the first thing I want to do is I need to uh, connect my LEDs to the internal timers, whatever timer available to that pin. So for PD12, if I click on it, it seems like the, the only available timer is timer 4, channel 1, so I click on this. And same thing for PD13 is timer 4, but it's channel 2. Uh, PD14, uh, channel 3. And 15 is apparently channel 4. Exactly. Uh, and I need to go here, scroll down to timer 4, and enable its uh, timer. So you select the clock source, and it will be enabled. Internal clock. Uh, so for channel 1, it's going to be the output compare, and you see this one will turn green now, and same thing for the others, all of them are output compare channel 2, channel 3, channel 4. And this connects my external LEDs to timer 4, channels 1 to 4. Now let's go to the configuration window and do some of the timer settings. And it's timer 4. Uh, the first thing is to set a prescaler. So the main clock frequency is 16 megahertz, and I need to slow it down. I want to divide it by 16,000 to slow it down to 1 kilohertz. And I'll make the period. The period is the counter. Uh, so the timer for will count from 0 to whatever value you specify here. I want it to count to 1,000, which means that after the prescaler being 16,000, every tick is 1 millisecond, and 1,000 ticks correspond to 1 second. And I've got four channels, so I want to toggle my first LED, the green one, after 250 uh, clock ticks, which is a quarter of a second. And at 500, I want to toggle the second LED, and so on. At 750 is the third LED, and at one second, I want to trigger the uh, fourth LED. Uh, and you've got to select the mode to be toggle. Toggle and match. This will toggle the whatever output connected to the timer, on that pulse and same thing for the others so I think it's a good time to refer to diagram and explain why I put 250, 500, 750 and 1000 I think it's the perfect time to get back to the diagram so here's the diagram again uh, it shows this prescale clock so I've got my clock pulse coming from the internal clocks um, in my case it's 16 megahertz uh, according to Cubimix uh, and I, I set a prescale of 16,000 to slow it down to 1 kilohertz. Um, each tick of 1 kilohertz clock corresponds to 1 millisecond. And I set the counter or the period to 1,000, so the counter will count from 0 to 1,000 and repeat. And these smaller blocks, the four comparators, correspond to the four channel pulses that I set in here, 250, 500, 750, and 1,000. And what these simply do is that uh, when the counter when the counter value gets to 250, this will toggle the first LED, and it will wait for the next 250, which is 500, and it will toggle the second one, 
and it will wait until this counter get to 750 and so on uh, and this one will toggle last when the counter get to the maximum value the counter will repeat and the cycle will start again so I hope now you got a better idea of what the block diagram content is uh, and now back to the timer configurations uh, I think that's everything we need to do uh, so click A and click on this icon to generate the source code uh, give the project a name I'll call it TIM OC for output compare uh, and I want to store it at this location STM project uh, select my correct ID MDK arm v5 and click OK and once this is done click on open project to launch Kyle microvision and in here we need to expand the folder application user and open domain uh, and as you can see QMX generated all the low-level configuration for us and all you've got to do is to write the main code and in here we just need to start timer 4 uh, but we need to start each channel independently and with a function called how tim output compare start and this function takes two parameter it takes the uh, timer handle type div and it's defined by cubemx for timer 4 uh, defined as htim4 and the second parameter is the channel and it's channel 1 and I need to do the same thing for the other channels so timer 2, 3 and 4 and that is all I need to do now I'm ready to compile and upload it to the board and you see how the ED will react so let me compile it I click this to upload it to the board perfect this is working and that's how to implement output compare functionality of STM timers uh, with the help of Cubemx so that's all looking for you may stop the video here and uh, if you found the video useful don't forget to like and subscribe but I'm gonna carry on and I'll show you how to do this without Cubemx uh, this is particularly useful for people who want to learn more of lower level programming of the STM and uh, specifically using Hull libraries so I'm gonna do it the first thing we need to do is to click on project and click on new microvision project and we need to select the folder to store our project files in and give the project a name now we need to select the uh, board STM3204 or 7 VGT and now we need to select the software components first thing is the SimSys core as always and the device startup we need to enable the uh, classic this requires some software components when I click resolve they will be added automatically uh, I need to go to STM cube hull and I need to add the timer software component which is this one and this requires DMA um, although I'm not going to use DMA but I'm going to add it anyway um, that's all I need so I click OK expand this folder and as you can see Cal Microvision generated a few uh, files for us and these are mainly the hull libraries but it did not add any main so I need to add the main manually so right click on this and add a new item to the group it has to be a C file and I'll call it main and the main file the first thing we need to do is we need to include the STM hull library header file and this will add the hull libraries uh, and I need to create my main function so int main void and infinite while loop at the end now we need to configure our TBIO bins that is to enable PD12 to PD15 and set them as timer outputs and I'm going to do this in a separate function I'll call it TBIO config and this function takes no parameter and return no parameter and I'll define this function at the bottom here and inside this function we need to do the following uh, I'm not going to go step by step now I'm just going to copy and paste the code uh, in my early videos I used to go step by step but I hope by now you already got the idea so I'm just going to paste it and explain it to you line by line so the first one is to enable port D clock quite simple one and then initialization type diff for the GPIO we use this type diff to configure the parameter it's used as a structure so my LED dot bin and we select the bins from 12 to 15 uh, pull no pull up no pull down speed uh, frequency medium and the mode to alternate function 
And the reason why I use alternate function is that for STM board, if you want to match any pin to anything different than digital input, digital output, or analog, it has to be alternate function. Let me clarify this more. If you go to the user manual of the STM of for discovery board and go to the pin description table, uh, for PD12, you see the alternate functions can either be FSMC, timer4, or USART. So that's why we select alternate function. And then the alternate is going to be timer 4 because we have three options but I want to select timer 4 I hope this is I hope this makes sense uh, and then we call how GPIO in it to implement those initialization pretty simple one really and the next thing we need to do is to configure our timer and I'm going to do it in a separate function too I'll call it tim config and this function similar thing doesn't take any parameter doesn't return any parameters but before we define the body of this of this function, uh, I'm going to define a tim handle type diff, and I'm going to define it globally because we're going to use it uh, in the main. I'll call it tim4 handle, and this is used to configure the timer. It does a similar thing to my LED here for GPIO, but except this one is for timers. So let me define the function tim config down here. And the first thing we need to do here is to enable timer for peripheral clock. And then we need to do some basic initialization to the uh, base timer. Uh, so to select an instance to be timer 4, uh, clock division to 1, uh, counter mode is count up. So it's going to count up from 0 to whatever period value is. Uh, Prescaler to 16,000, just like what we did in QMX, to scale the uh, clock down to 1 kHz and period to 400. And then we call HAL TIM base init to implement those initializations. The next thing is to configure the source clock. Uh, and so we need to do the following. We need to define a clock config type diff. Similar thing, similar idea to this, but this one to configure the clock source. And we need to select the clock source to be the internal clock. And then call this function to implement those initialization. There is an, just only one initialization here, or one configuration, so to speak. Then we implement the output compare initialization. We just call in uh, output compare init function and it will do the default initialization of the output compare clock. Uh, and the next thing we need to do is to configure something called master configurations to select the trigger output to reset and master slave to disable. Uh, this is described in detail in the date sheet, so I'm not going to talk much about it. And by the way, if you're wondering where did I get this from and how can I know which function to call in first, they're all described in the timer driver function, uh, the driver file rather. So if you open the hull timer driver file and scroll down to line 48 where it says how to use this driver, you'll see the steps are described very clearly. We first enable timer clock uh, and then we do GPIO initializations, uh, timer initialization, configure clock source, time based init and so on. Uh, so I just follow the same ones and I summarize everything in here right so finally what we need to do is to configure our output compare channels uh, because each timer has got four channels and we want to use output compare uh, and we connected them to our LED so we need to configure them uh, first thing this these configuration apply to the four channels um, so disable fast mode um, the output compare mode to toggle so it's going to toggle the LEDs each time the comparator triggers and polarity to high which means active high uh, then we set each channel's as pulse so for channel 1 I want the pulse to be 100 so when the counter get to 100 this will trigger the uh, first LED and similarly for the other channel so the, I want the second channel to be 200 third channel to be 300 and 400 for the last one uh, now we're done and just need to call those functions in the main to implement the configurations so the first function I want to call is the hull init. This is a function in the hull driver that will initialize everything to the default state. It's quite useful to call it at the start of every program. Uh, then I'll call the two configuration functions that I defined. So tio config and tim config. And then I need to start the timer for each channel. A function is called hull tim output compare start. And it takes two parameters. It takes the TIM handle type diff, which is which I called it TIM4 handle, and the second parameter is the channel, so TIM channel one. Uh, and you need to call and you need to call it four times for each channel. So 
this will enable channel one, channel one, channel two, three, and four. And that's everything we need to do. Now we're ready to compile and upload it to the board. Compile successfully without any errors and with one minor warning, which you're not going to care about. Uh, now let's upload it to the board and look at the LED. So click this icon to load it to the board. Okay, so the compiler, the debugger is wrong. So I need to go to options for target and go to debug window and select ST link and go to settings as well uh, trace and enable trace set the core clock to 16 megahertz similar to the STM1 and now it should load uh, properly perfect uh, now let's have a look at the board okay this is working too except I've just noticed that it's working much faster than the previous one uh, and that's simply because I set the period to 400 instead of 1000 and I uh, toggled the LEDs at uh, 100 millisecond intervals uh, but that's not a problem, it works, the functionality works the same uh, so that brings me to the end of HAL library demo and I'm now going to take you very quickly through the direct register access method as well I'm just going to copy and paste the code and I'll try to explain it to you very briefly uh, I'll put a link down in the description for people who are interested uh, but I'm not going to do it step by step Okay, so for the direct register access method, I've deleted all the mains. I'm going to paste the direct register method that I've written in advance. So here it is. Um, it's doing the same thing using two functions, gbio config and tim config. Uh, and the gbio config, I'm doing everything using the direct register access method. Uh, if you watch one of my earlier videos, you will have explained how to do the gbio one, but I did not go through the tim config in my previous videos. Uh, but this is not too complex. All you've got to do is to search for TIM4 in the date sheet and look at that register. And you'll see the content of control register 1, uh, prescaler register, and auto reload, uh, status register, uh, and so on. So, and I, tr I, comment, I commented to the best I can. So you see, I've written lots of comments. I'm going to put it down in the description for you. Just follow it, read it line by line. If it didn't work for you or if you had any questions, feel free to ask me down in the comments. Uh, but I'll leave that for you to try it out. Uh, now, just to convince you that it works the same, I'll compile it and load it to the board. Okay, compiled without any errors, and now loading it to the board. Perfect, let's have a look at the board. Okay, very good, this is working as well. So, I've shown you today how to use STM board timers in output compare mode using three methods, using CubeMX, using hull drivers directly and direct register access. And this brings me to the end of my tutorial today. If you found it helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks for watching. Goodbye.